Welcome to my final discussion on receivables where we're going to look at some ratios to help us evaluate business performance. We have three on this one. The asset test ratio, the accounts receivable turnover ratio, and days sales and inventory. We have happy goals with this pink cast. Still a little bit quick. We would like to take a stringent look at ability of a business to pay its bills as they can do with the asset test or quick ratio. We already looked at the current ratio to get a feel for their liquidity. This is a more stringent test as it backs out assets that are less liquid as far as current assets go. And then we're also going to determine how efficiently a business is managing its accounts receivable. So, let's get started. We're going to add three ratios to your arsenal of looking at ways that outside or external users can take our financial statements and based on the information that's contained in them, make investment decisions. Let's start with the asset test or quick ratio. Again, the cash ratio or the asset test ratio and the quick ratio is a really stringent measure of our liquidity, our ability to pay bills as they come due. It's not as stringent as a cash ratio, but it's more stringent than the current ratio. The formula is um, to take your current asset section of your balance sheet, which of course is an order of liquidity, and take the cash plus cash equivalents any short-term investments you might have and your accounts receivable add those all together and use those as a numerator and then use current liabilities as the denominator what this gives you is a ratio that tells you how much or how fast you can pay your current liabilities as they can do it pulls out, you'll notice, prepaids and inventories, our other two current assets, because it takes quite a while to turn inventory into cash, and prepaids will never turn into cash, so they will save you from having to spend it. Um, it used to be that we liked this ratio, we have a little goal for it, to be somewhere around one to one, but that was back in times when we were more conservative. Now, 0.75 to one. It's often considered a decent relationship, meaning for every dollar you have in current liabilities, you have 75 cents in current assets use them to pay on their behalf. The real benefit of a ratio, of course, is when you do trend analysis to see if it's improving or getting worse in industry comparisons. There's a practice for this ratio included in this media, so let's, instead of calculating one, move to our next ratio. Account receivable turnover measures the number of times you collect your accounts receivable in any given year. The formula is to take your net credit sales and divide that by your average accounts receivable. The average accounts receivable is your beginning accounts receivable plus your ending accounts receivable divided by 2. Remember we do this whenever we have an income statement number in our numerator and a balance sheet number in our denominator because the income statements for a period of time but the balance sheet's a point in time in order to make that balance sheet more reflective of the period of time do an average of it it would be really great to do 12 months average it would be really accurate then but that's getting over the top and it's more often than not you don't have 12 months worth of financial statements so you calculate this ratio, it measures the number of times you turn your accounts receivable over in a year. You'd like this number to be steady.
Still early in the morning. Hard to spell steady. Sorry. I'd like it to be steady. And you'd like it to be probably something under 12, but not much. Something between 10 and 12, meaning you're collecting your accounts receivable about every month. That would be the case if you had credit terms of 30 days. If you had credit terms of 60 days, you'd like it to be around 6. Then you could say that you're turning it over about as fast as your credit terms dictate. And again, in this video, we'll have a way for you to practice that. Right in that same category is our day sales and receivable ratio, where you take 365 and divert it, divide it by your accounts receivable turnover. That actually turns your number into days. It gives you your collection period. It tells you how many days it takes to collect your accounts receivable. And it's directly tied to the results of the turnover. So once you've done the turnover, you can 365 and then divide it by that. And say, yes, it, my average collection period is about 40 days. And if you're terms are net 30, then your credit sales manager is doing a pretty good job. We did a bunch in this pencast. We looked at a measure of liquidity, the asset test ratio, and then a measure or two or two measures of efficiency, accounts receivable turnover, and the day sales and receivable turnover. That concludes this pencast. Part of this video will give you a chance to practice some. Thanks for joining me.